this is a Borg Warner System 80. This machine was, um, as I understand it, developed in uh, the mid to late 60s and um, was the first machine that was used uh, to introduce technology in the classroom. Um, and I think it was pretty popular around the uh, 70s um, and uh, early 80s. Just give you an overview of the machine. There's a screen on the front that has five buttons uh, to select. Demonstrate that in a minute. And then power button here. There's a speaker in the front. This slot down here in the in the uh, corner. It's not a floppy drive. That's actually where you put a um, cartridge, essentially that has microfilm and some data encoded on it. On the left side here, there's a focus ring for the projection screen and a volume in the rear. And over here on the right is where you would change the uh, the bulb. It's basically like a rear projector. So a little bit about the media. Um, the media consisted of two parts. It has a, a record that has both audio uh, information on it. Well, I think it's only audio information. And then a, let's call it a cartridge here that has some microfilm on it and um, the data uh, that's encoded. It's almost like a punch card. And um, this basically is the answer key. And there are two slide, two sides um, to the uh, cartridge. There's the, you can put it in this way into the machine, or you can flip it around and put it in upside down. So that allows, um, you know, two different sides for each uh, each set of media. Okay, so I'm going to show you the inside of this System 80. There's uh, some tabs on the rear which kind of pop off, and then this upper unit, this upper case just pulls off. And this is where the uh, um, record goes. So you would pull down the front, you would slide the record in, and then you would put the cartridge in the lower right, and that's how it would display. Power this guy on. So when you turn it on, it's pretty much just a blank screen. You can hear a fan working in the background. I'm gonna take and put in some media. I notice I put the uh, the record in here with the uh, triangle side up, and with this guy here, what I'm gonna do is slide this in with the triangle side up as well. Close this, push that in all the way, and we're kind of ready to go. So in this case, I'm gonna hit the rabbit on the right. Now I've noticed that, there we go. Sometimes the audio doesn't kick in right away, um, but essentially, if you want to repeat, just answer something incorrectly. 9 times 3 equals 27. Find the right group of dots. So in this case, it's kind of hard to see, but the, the indicator as to which button uh, is the correct answer is right down there. 9 times 3 equals 27. Find the equation. Look at the 27 dots. What does 9 times 3 equal? So if you answer incorrectly, basically what it's going to do is it's going to not advance and it's just going to replay the question over again. Look at the 27 dots. What does 9 times 3 equal? And that'll happen over and over again. Look at the 27 dots. What does 9 times 3 equal? Until you get it right. 27. Which equation equals 27? Find an equation that equals 27. Which of these numbers equals 27? So what's interesting about this from a from a uh, instructional pedagogy level is repetition was the uh, 
the uh, pedagogy of choice back in the 70s and 80s. So you could complete one of these um, sides of a record and it would just ask you the same question over and over again in different ways. What's also interesting here is the um, the way you can advance the slide and whether this was the proper way or not is, is to pull the slide out. Now, here's what's interesting. If we open the top again, you can kind of see how this guy works. There's a stylus here. The record's not moving all the time. It's only moving when the, uh, the slide advances. So I'm going to insert one of these. Three times nine equals 27. Find the right group of dots. So if I answer one correctly. Three times nine equals 27. Find the equation. You can notice that it advances each time. Look at the 27 dots. What does three times nine equal? And if I pull this out, you'll notice that the stylus or the, the arm for the, uh, for the record kind of advances. So if I push it in all the way. So that's how the system stays in sync. If I go to the end here. And eventually if you answer it, 36. Which equation equals 36? Find an equation that equals 36. Which of these numbers equals 36? Well, every once in a while this will stick. Find two equations that equal 27. 7 times 7 equals 49. Find the right group of dots. 7 times 7 equals 49. Find the equation. Look at the 49 dots. What does 7 times 7 equal? Find an equation that equals 49. Which of these numbers equals 49? What is the product of 7 times 7? There are seven rows of seven dots. How many dots are there? Find the answers to these equations. Nine times three equals... Three times nine equals... Three times nine equals... Six times six equals... 7 times 7 equals... That's all. Now take the record and film slide out, please. Okay, so that's the end. And uh, when you pop this open, the slide actually advances out uh, slightly. Um, in fact, if you push it in with the, the turntable up, I mean with the, uh, the uh, door down, it doesn't stay in. It just kind of pops out automatically. I have one more here that I'll demonstrate. This one has a, uh, this is for uh, language, for English. Put in with the uh, triangle side. And take the record out. Do the triangle side up again. Put this guy in, close the door. Set this guy. Ready to go. Complete the sentence. Complete this sentence. Find the helping word in the sentence, then complete the sentence. Read this. Find the missing word. Okay, so there you can see the Borg Warner System 80.
pretty interesting, uh, fully mechanical, very little solid state uh, device used in uh, education classrooms.